There is a safety on this, so no lasting damage will actually be done. There you go. Oh, this is gonna be good. If only Washington cut spending like you cut hair. <laughs> I think mission accomplished, yeah. right? All right, so we've cut some Republican hair now. <laughs> a little Democratic hair, right? right. Are, are you sure? It's so about Are you sure oh, you're ready for this? I, I'm actually finally loved by Barnes. So you like a... <laughs> I'm good! That's good! We can comb it over! <laughs> this is just too good. In for a dime, in for a dollar, right? My kids are gonna run. All right, you guys pulled it off. Coming together for a good cause and without any hair now. Brad Woodhouse, Sean Spicer. Great job. Thank you very much. Way too much John Carl in that segment. <laughs> um, but he knows that. Hair today, gone tomorrow. What you saw there was a display of bipartisan baldness. It's for charity. DNC spokesman Brad Wardhouse and RNC spokesman Sean Spicer made a bet before the election that whoever's candidate lost would have his head shaved to raise money for cancer research. Well, Spicer lost, of course, but Woodhouse agreed to sacrifice his hair as well. Both men join me now, Brad Wardhouse. Oh, that is, that's Spicer. a scary sight right there. Being, here. Look at you two. I, you know, <laughs> this is, I've decided and you're both, it's a good thing you're both already married. Before, I mean, because there's right, no way your wife would like this. <laughs> Another bet without consulting Nate Silver. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Nate will appreciate that. He, he, he will. You're going to get a lot uh, of crap for that. All right, let, let, before we get to business here, tell me about the specific cancer research group that, that we're raising money for. Uh, well, as you mentioned, we, we made this bet. Mm -hmm. I, I lost the bet. Uh, and then Brad got a call from an organization called the St. Baldrick's Foundation, which raises money for childhood cancer. And he, in a very good natured, uh, bipartisan way, decided that he would jump in and we would do it together mm -hmm. to raise money for this charity and uh, and so we've uh, and, and it's Brad, a where can people go uh, it, give well st. Baldrick's dot org is where they is where they should go it's a wonderfully important charity that focuses all of its attention on raising money for research into childhood cancers and uh, and, and they do they raise all their money by shaving heads I mean that is the entire right. uh, that is the entire right. thing that they that they do to raise money so they raise they, they shave celebrity heads they, they would shave yours I'm, I'm sure, sure they, Chuck yeah. uh, we could do uh, it for but, you uh, but is it, yeah we could that. have clippers in the yeah. car <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to go to the business end. Sure. And, uh, Sean, let me start with you. The this pledge, this Grover Norquist pledge, how important is it to the Republican Party? Well, I think it's very important. I mean, we have. I think it's the, important for people that have signed this pledge to keep it. I think it's important for them to remember the problem that we have, which is a spending problem. Um, and and frankly, I think we look at it in terms of any family. If your family is grown into debt, the first thing you do is say, "Hey, Dad, go out and get a second job, raise more revenue for the family." You look at the family budget and say, "Where do we cut? How do we get back?" Once that's all done thoroughly, then I think you look and say, "Okay." Okay, we're a little, still a little short to pay down the debt. How can we bring in some more revenue? Uh, so I think before we, you know, for a lot of these members of Congress who have committed to saying, hey, the problem is spending, we need to reform our out of control entitlements, mm -hmm. that's where the focus should be. Now, Brad, on the issue of entitlements, sure. Social Security and Medicare in particular, uh, the, the base of the Democratic Party going to allow the president some leeway on this? Well, look, I think uh, we need to have everything on the table, but let's so that, be clear. That, that but let's is, be clear. Social, so everything security is social, is security? Not, social Security is not contributing to the current debt or the debt. That Social Security is something that needs to be shored up. It's relatively relatively easy uh, to do compared to the other compared to the other problems. But we need to take a balanced approach to the other problems. I mean, this idea that we can just we, the, you know the, the American people didn't believe uh, the Republican Party's nominee who said you know we can just get rid of some of these uh, deductions, we can get rid of some of these loopholes. That's not going to work. Sean, we I have don't to go farther. I don't understand the frankly the contortions being taken by some Republicans to avoid raising the tax rate even a point or two at this point. Can you explain why it's so important not to raise the rate at all, even if it means uh, getting rid of all sorts of deductions. Because I, I think the, you have to say before you raise the rates and say, hey, everyone needs to pay more, we need to look at things that we can do to flatten the code, to, to grow the economy, right. bring more money in. Why would you tell people they have to pay more, small businesses, individuals, before you're you already going to be making revenues? them pay more by getting rid of half these deductions? Well, I think it makes it flatter and fairer and, and supports economic growth and stops picking winners and losers in some cases. But the other problem is, is that we've been here in the 80s and 93 and 97. We put the revenue first, delay, say, hey, we'll agree to these spending cuts that come down the road, and, and most of them never materialize. Well, look, 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 we've we had the know, deficit reduction. We, we do know Graham, this. We, we do know this. We know, uh, we know that the rates that we had under Clinton, we had the best economy that we've had in the past 50 years. We can go back to those rates. I, I, still I have want to talk about economy. the future of both your parties. Sure. Uh, Brad Woodhouse, one thing we have learned is when Barack Obama's on the ballot, there is a coalition there that helps Democrats win a lot of elections. Mm -hmm. When Barack Obama's not on the ballot, 
the one time that he was head of the party but not on the ballot, uh, he got the party got shellacked. How do you change that? Well, look, that, that was there were obviously a lot of factors there. I mean, we were facing 10 percent to unemployment. We had had this uh, raucous debate over uh, raucous debate over health care. I think one of the things we learned in this uh, are the lessons that candidates and the party will take away uh, from President Obama, and that's to make early investments. Uh, that is to expand the map. Uh, that is to be on the ground, invest in data, uh, invest in infrastructure, and that's. One one of the things I think we will do. The 50 state strategy that Howard Dean put in place was a precursor to what Barack Obama did. We're going to continue that. And, and Sean, you have a problem with the, mo the more people that vote, the, the less likely Republicans do well. Well, I think, I think we did very well in a lot of places. Our ground game in every battleground state was up from 2008. It wasn't up enough, except Ohio probably. Um, so I think what we need to do and what we are doing right now, Chairman Priebus has, offer, has, uh, has taken, undertaken a full review of our ground game, our messaging, the metrics, everything that we can do in terms of messaging, mechanics, tactics, and said, what did we do well? Let's do more of that. What did we not do as well? And how can we do better? But it's got to be a thorough analysis. Priebus is running for another term. He is. Okay. Debbie Washington Schultz, this is a discretion of the president. Does it, she want to stay on? As far as I, I, I haven't had a discussion with her. I, I think she would, I think she would like probably like to stay, but, uh, but you know, that decision will be made between her and the president. Hey, real uh, quick, Chuck, uh, St. Baldrick's, uh, you can be a superhero. Very nice. Go to stbaldrick's.org, and this is uh, one thing that we can all come together on. Uh, be a hero, support St. Baldrick's, join Brad and I, and uh, it's a head. great shirt. It, it is, is a great shirt. shirt. Better looking than your heads. <laughs> Absolutely. And now you realize you have to make up your head. Well, that's, that's probably the weirdest thing that's that's right. to make up in your head. Thank you both. Coming up, how did Senate Democrats...